Sanbanan Dumlang, hello, it's Simply Spissa and welcome back to another episode of the podcast Simply Do The Work, aka ASMR edition. I'm kidding, but I'm recording this at like 11 30 pm, so people are sleeping, so I cannot be loud. So hopefully, it doesn't sound like I'm whispering too much, like I'm trying to project my voice just a little bit into this microphone. But before we dive into today's episode, I just want to say if you're not yet subscribed, please do subscribe to the podcast. Also share it with your friends, family, and to whomever and wherever. And also feel free to reach out to me at Simply Svisa on Instagram and Twitter to share with me your thoughts, comments, suggestions. And yeah, I'd love to hear from you guys. So title of today's podcast episode is i've always been black and before we dive into it you kind of want to talk about a previous podcast episode i did um titled why it's so damaging to be called a coconut i also put that up on youtube and it was quite an interesting video just to make and even just re-watching it i was surprised at how well those um thoughts and opinions aged because sometimes like i'll listen back to a previous podcast or watch a, a video i did and there'll be certain points i'm like ooh, I, I don't think like that anymore like like if someone were to pull up that video or that comment and be like what did you mean here i'd have to be like i don't think like that anymore but this specific video on why it's damaging to be called a coconut still really much resonates with me um and the response from it was mostly positive like there were a few people who said some really strange things and i think they either one didn't understand the point i was trying to make or two they didn't watch the whole video right this is specifically on youtube because the point of that video or slash podcast episode was not to um play the victim it was not to um complain because i think the, okay the one specific comment right that kind of rubbed me the wrong way was someone who said that i need to um forgive and um seek therapy and get healing or something along those lines which i'm like girl um i'm, I'm okay like i literally say in that video i'm not a victim in any sense you know it's just I don't know, I feel like that person was either A, projecting their own stuff onto me, or I do think they just, they didn't watch the video in its entirety, or they just, the message just didn't hit the way it came across, and the way I intended, I mean. But really what I was trying to, the point I was trying to make with that video was to say that, um, as black pe- as a black person, right, I should be allowed to express myself, right, however I want, but also, it was also talking about me taking accountability for a like um the privilege that i have and buying into that buying into an elitist a black elitist mindset you know taking accountability for that and also taking accountability and um reconnecting with my culture right and taking that responsibility to say you know what i value and respect my specific culture because i think with that like they uh, that video was really based on my story right it wasn't a research heavy um conversation i was talking about how me being a zulu right a zulu person zulu person i grew up in a space that was predominantly sutu and so that was a different um ethnic group a different culture right which was different from mine and i felt alienated from that right let's talk about being alienated from my own Zulu people right and even just the um the confounding um factors that came with being in certain predominantly white spaces which is also topics which i think have come up in episodes released after that sorry for bumping the mic i'm just trying to put up my notes here and so let us get into the inspiration for the title for today's video or oh, sorry podcast which is i've been black all along well i've always been black so i was listening to the cheeky natives podcast a couple of weeks ago and they were talking about now i don't fully remember the details because it was quite a while ago but i remember writing this the sentence i've always been black in my notes because like 
this we need to discuss on the podcast someday talking about a character in this book who leaves their home which i think was in the south in america and they move to the midwest now this is a black queer character right and so in the south they had to deal with like queer phobia and so and so they move to the midwest and in the midwest they find that you know yes the midwest is a lot more accepting of queer people but they don't like black people right and so for the first time they're like confronted with their blackness because when you're in predominantly black places you don't really have to deal with that you know you don't really consciously think of that and i think about the incident i had with uh, my friends last year which i did discuss on one of like the probably the first podcast episode i believe yes about how when i made a joke calling um my like my white friends colonizers how they took offense to that i think that was the first time my friends and i realized that oh wait i'm black and you're not you know and i just look at my life now and how to be honest i'm mostly surrounded by black people like at home we're all black like i'm sure if you've watched my vlogs you see it literally my like my friends everyone i interact with on the regular are black like the only non-black people that i interact with are friends from high school and there's like a few people in my varsity right too you know i i am like you know kids could say we're friends something which you know when i think back to earlier in my life because like i haven't always been surrounded by black like i've been in predominantly white spaces which is something that i recognize that not all black people that's not everyone's experience right and so i think that's where i found myself you know ingesting um anti-black sentiments from those white people that i was surrounded by and even like i've talked about you know in why i left the church that podcast about how i was you know tokenized you know in in that predominantly white church that we went to but I still love to say that I've reached this point, which I reached a long time ago, where I realized that there's, there's nothing wrong with being black, right? Like, um, Mudiroi, one of my favorite artists, has a song called Wait, where he sings, I'll wait for you to realize there's nothing wrong with being black. And um, Dr. Is it, I think it's Dr. Ibram X. Kendi, um, he says that the only problem with black people is thinking that there is a problem with black people and literally that line is sort of the lens in which i approach any issue right for example the issue that was happening with regards to the looting and the unrest here in south africa a lot of like i saw a lot of anti-blackness going around when that happened and i kept telling myself the only problem with black people is thinking there was a problem with black people right because it was it's kind of like people would it's like that was the catalyst for some people or they thought yes okay this happening now i can say whatever i want about black people i saw some atrocious things being said on social media and so i'm always working just to see how do i approach things from an anti-racist standpoint i do recommend you guys um read the book stamped from the beginning by abram x kendi it's a lot like one it's a long book but it is definitely worth it and I think something else is just my relationship with my own queerness, right? I found that the more I tap into my queerness, the more I tap into my blackness. I think one of the simplest examples of this would be with regards to how I do my hair, right? Something is that I've always been conscious about. So whenever I want to style my hair, I always want it to be Afrocentric styles. It will be braids, twists locks you know not like and if you want to put in weaves and you want to relax your hair no that's for you that's not my business right you know i've, I've had conversations like uh, the history of hair podcast that's where i talk about you know the issues surrounding that but for me you know that is how i'm able to tap into my queerness but also explore my blackness you know that's just a very simple i think practical example that's easy to understand but you know if you know you know if you don't you don't and so i've also been thinking about who is like what is black like i think about what is blackness who gets to call themselves black now i think you know we recognize that race is a social construct and i think this idea of who is black differs from country to country right you know, nothing you have to understand is that as black people, we aren't a monolith, right? 
like I mentioned how I'm at I think also another thing I know like with regards to who is black you know people tend to use the words um, race, nationality, and ethnicity interchangeably um, I think like for me for example if I talk about it's like race I'm black nationality I'm South African ethnicity I'd say I'm Zulu right because Zulu is not only just a language but it's also like a whole culture to it right and so recognizing that also recognize that there are certain there are certain things that just because I'm black doesn't mean I can partake in because they're from a different group of black people who have their own um, cultures and customs and I think that is really a conversation I'd love to explore someday with you guys but you know I just want to keep this short and cute and just finish off by saying that you know I'm always learning and growing and I'm really excited to have this platform to talk to you guys about the things I'm thinking about and reading and learning and so thank you so much for listening to this episode hopefully the audio isn't too bad and until you guys see me either on youtube or you hear from me in the next video love you so much Mwah.